Hey everyone, welcome back to NodeFlow. So in this first official lesson of this course, we'll open Houdini for the first time. I will just show you how to move around and how to create a few nodes, just to understand how Houdini works. Open the Houdini launcher and just press on launch. In this way, you'll be prompted with a splash screen and you will just need to wait a few seconds for that to open. In the first time you open Houdini, that will be a little bit slower, but then it will speed up. Once Houdini has opened, you will find something like that. And I know this looks crazy hard and daunting because we have lots of buttons here, just wondering how I can use all of them. And you have different tabs on this side. And of course, I get the feeling the first time you open Houdini. So just to simplify all of that, I just figured out that you can press Ctrl, Alt and S. In this way, we just forget about all of that. And now the UI is way cleaner. And I hope this helps to give the idea that all of those options are not necessarily important for now. At this point, we can basically appreciate two different panels. So the first one is the viewport over here. If you're used to Maya or Blender, this will not be something new for you. It's just where you can see your 3D model and you can go around it and move. On the right side, we can find here the network view. This is where you will create your nodes. And you can see here empty network, press tab to add new nodes. So let's do that. I will just press tab and I will create a sphere node. As you can see, we have a few things that changed. Here we can see the sphere that we have created. And here we can also see some options for the node. So like some translate options, some rotate options, and also scale. To be correct, these options are called parameters. And by manipulating parameters, we are basically manipulating the geometry. But you see here, we don't have too much control. For instance, what if I want to extrude my sphere? Or what if I want to add like a beveling operation or something like that? Let me try to look for bevel. You see, nothing pops up. That's because we are in the wrong context. What are contexts in Houdini? So Houdini has been divided in different parts, usually referred as context. So one is specifically for simulations, another one is for manipulating geometry. And then we have so many more, because of course Houdini tends to be a huge software. But again, we don't need to know all of those. If we go here where it says OBJ, this is the context we are in. You can also check the correct name on this side where it says objects. For now, I just need to go inside of this node. So double click in it. I'm now in the geometry context. And over here, I can do all the manipulations that I want. So if I'm looking for a bevel node, I will be able to find it. And if I'm looking for an extrude, I will be able to find it and so on. Let's also clarify some of these names. So if you have heard your Houdini friend talking about Houdini, you probably heard something like dops, lops, sops. What is all this mess? This is basically referring to the nodes that you can find in every single context. You see, every single context will have specific nodes for your needs. So in this case, that we are using the geometry context, we have nodes that are referred as SOPs, and that stands for Surface Operators. And Operators is just a fancy way to say node. So all these nodes that we find here are for manipulating surfaces. So polygons, faces, edges, and so on. In a simulation context, you will find that the nodes are usually referred as DOPs. So dynamic operator. At this point, I want to show you how to navigate your viewport and your network view. If I go in my viewport, I can just hold Alt and left click and that will let me orbit around my model. If I want to pan, I can do the same with Alt and middle mouse button. And you, as you can see, I can pan around, left, right, top, bottom. And if I want to zoom, you just need to use the right mouse button and you can just zoom in and zoom out. Alternatively, you can also use the scroll wheel. So here you will basically have the same settings, but in this case, you don't need to use Alt. So you can just hold the middle mouse button and you can move or just the right mouse button and you can zoom in and zoom out. Also, we will notice that we have a hierarchy over here. So you see OBJ and then sphere one. So we have basically created the sphere node inside of the OBJ folder. Now that we have our sphere, let's see how to make that a little bit more interesting. It's very hard to see how many polygons I have. So for that, I will just press Shift and W. This just toggles the wireframe on top of our mesh. And it's useful for this simple operations like, you know, changing the rows and the columns of our sphere. So for now, I will set both of them to 35 and you are free to play with all of these parameters just to get the idea of how they influence what we see in the viewport. So remember, these are parameters. In the later chapters, we'll also see attributes, and that's a different thing. If you want to go back to OBJ, you can use the shortcut U, and that basically goes back one level in the hierarchy. Then if you select your sphere again, and you want to go inside, you just press I. So U and I are very close in the keyboard, so it's very easy to switch between inside and outside. When you have a more complex hierarchy, that will be even more apparent. But for now, that is great. We are in the geometry context. You're doing amazing. So over here, we can do so many things. Let's start with something simple. I will create a mountain node. If I just drop it down, it 
it could give me some errors. You see, it says required geometry to add noise to. So I just need to connect that to my sphere. And Houdini nodes tend to be very particular. You see, you have four buttons. These four buttons are also equivalent to these four buttons that you have over here. You see, they just light up when you hover on them. For now, let's focus only on the last one. This is just to display your results in the viewport. So to see what the mountain one is doing, I just need to click here. And as you can see this node, it's adding some noise to our sphere. In case you want to know more about this node, you can always click on this question mark. This question mark is something amazing. I've never seen that in another software. And that's why I really think you should learn Houdini. In this case, this mountain is just a preset of a node that's originally called attribute noise. So it's taking me to the correct page just to tell me all the details I need to know. You will notice that everything is very well explained and documented. One of the great things of side effects is that they keep a very organized documentation. Just to make this a little bit more fun, you see you can just increase your amplitude, you can also increase your element size or reduce it. We are just applying a noise, so a black and white map on top of this. And when these values will be white, we'll have like an instructions. And when the value will be black, we'll basically go inside. In this case, I want to add a very quick animation. So I can click on this animation button and you can now see that if I press play, my noise is being animated. Now this is way too fast, right? And this is because before playing everything in your timeline, you should always check this small button. This is a real time toggle and it ensures that you play everything back at 24 frames per second. So now, as you can see, I have my sphere animating. At this point, I could also change the amplitude completely live I can also change the element size, maybe making something that looks a little bit better. And I'll press Shift W to just remove the wireframe. As an extra step, I just want to show you how to add a symbol color. So I'll press Tab and I will look for color. Enter and let's drop it down. Of course, don't be scared if it gives an error. It's just because, of course, it needs something to apply the color on top. So let's connect our node and let's visualize the color. Nothing is happening and that's because we're setting a color, but it's just white. So we can choose whatever color we want and we can also use this wheel to achieve a very specific color. I will try to make something that resembles the Houdini color, so maybe something like that. And again, that's your first exercise in Houdini. So I really hope I was able to demystify some of these hard concepts in Houdini. As you can see, it's not even that hard. It's just like switching your mind into thinking the Houdini way. I will then press Ctrl, Alt, and S, and you'll see that this is the whole UI. So yeah, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.